Okay, so I haven't checked the attic crawl spaces yet, so I just want to do my exterior video. I had the selling agent come by earlier, let her know that we that uh, me and the buying agent uh, turn off the hot water heater, and I'll be turning off when I'm done. So okay, well, I'm gonna go through obviously the most important things. Obviously, you could see why we got water. I'm gonna show in the video real quick, get closer. You can see the water dripping, obviously because like we talked about in the roof. And obviously you just see how long of a run these are. That there is no downspout. There should be a downspout right where that valley is going down. Um, and obviously over here too, there should be one over here too. Based on the, um, like I said in the other, based on the pitch and obviously you can't even make that kind of a run to even get you proper drainage anyway. I mean, especially if you don't have yeah, look at that. You know, we have fascia on there, so you're just on raptor tails. Um, okay, I'm gonna go this way. If I miss anything, it's gonna be on the report, obviously. Um, you know, it's interesting. Uh, never mind. Ah, I found the attic access over there. So, older unit, but it ran. Um, I'm gonna put a number to have it serviced. Um, can't put a number to replace it. Um, so obviously, we need to have spray insulation of that, or actually, um, cement mortar uh touch up those areas around the unit um obviously that's not good um so i'm gonna go in the attic because i want to interested to see how many hopefully we don't have insulation there that's from hoping because if there's insulation in there i am concerned that there might be too much moisture because these are the only vents in the crawl space as you can see so if there's insulation in there i'm going to be really nervous about the conditions of the choice members like i said i have not checked that yet so i'll be putting a crawl space drone in there and doing a video of that so okay i'm going to try to go around and um so the garage door the safety reverses do not line up also the only way it goes up and down is by holding the button. So this is kind of an important deal right here. And I think you should definitely talk to the appraiser you hire and see in disclosures is if, sorry for the, there we are. If um, these, this bathroom and this bonus room is part of the square footage for sale. Cause I just asked the selling agent and she really didn't really have an answer for that because i will guarantee you this thing is not permitted at all and it's actually more than the required square footage to be considered um where you have to get permitted so this in the bathroom it's new plumbing and obviously um it's a fan so it's not ac but i think it's important to try to figure that out find out so this 220 plug I was not able to get any power out of it, which is funny because it's on the other side of the wall of the oven. So I would definitely, we're gonna have, definitely have to put a service and a request for that. Okay. All right, so whenever you see the top of the door run, we can get to that side. Um, usually, actually it's running against the side of the jam right here. So just run a three inch screw, boom, and then boom down here. Sorry, the video's kind of not good. Um, yeah, like I said, some self-explanatory stuff. I'm going to actually take this video outside more than anything. Because this stuff, like, it's in the inside of the house is really self-explanatory. So I want to focus more on exterior structural stuff. So let's just get out of here and go to the back. So, sorry, the video is so freaking fuzzy. There we are. So... We need to get this panel replaced. <laughs> Just, I'm already putting a number down for it. It needs to go. It's one of those Slovenia's Zensko panel boxes, and it's already reached past its life expectancy anyway. So we're gonna put a number down to replace that. Okay, like I said, we have. Um, I had him start the hot water heater, so. I just want to have someone else here just in case to do it in case something happens okay and here we are so obviously this is what happens so you don't properly fasten uh, 
Oh, this is interesting. So what happened is, let's see right here. See how the joist members are pulling away, which they didn't even put the uh, joist uh, hangers on anyway. But the way it's twisting is really interesting because I think the one way you can really fix it is we can slide this back, re-level it, run lags, replace the rim member, and put a brace across there. Um, I'm trying to see why it did that. Because movement's not on the ground. Movement's not shifting this way. It's on flat ground. I believe, that honestly, that it came twisted. And they just put the worst member on the back. And obviously with a combination of the sun damage hitting it up here where the sun goes, hitting that, it just split away. So we're going to have to put a number to replace part of that, which I'll do. Um, and then re-lag it through. No, I missed, look at that. They put missing nails on that post. <laughs> missing joist nails. They didn't even, they didn't even do it, did they? Is there any? <laughs> None. There's no... Wow, look at that. They just... I was able to move that. Interesting. Well, that's not good. <laughs> okay. So, I think they just... I honestly think my opinion on this is that they never had it lined up when they first started. So they had those poured. Let's see if we even have footing there. Actually, I'll tell you right now. There's our problem. Let me see if I can even find a footing here. There is no footing it moved. So it's just pure blocks moving, sitting there. Okay. That's another reason why I like doing these videos. Because I like to be able to um, uh, see on video and try to remove, try to guess again on what's going on. Okay, so we got moisture damage on the bottom of the stringer right there. And I think it's, it's eh. I mean, this one's obviously got to go, got to get replaced. A lot of these, um, Rally members can, all threads can be tightened up. Let me see how much room he got. Yeah, he can refasten all of those. Um, fascia members. Obviously we need to put some trim member, trim member there. Make sure you flash the nail flange before that. And below that also has a broken uh, flange underneath the bottom. Place fascia member, reattach gutter. Place fascia member, reattach gutter. Actually, the problem is when you do it like this, they're supposed to actually um, block back. Well, that's just stupid. They did it wrong anyway. You're not supposed to put it there. You're supposed to put it on the end. So when you don't do wrapped around fascia, you want to run a block in the back and you cut back that rafter tail. Let me see if I can show. They cut back the rafter tail. See my finger? Inch and a half. That slides the board through that tightens the gutter to the uh to the block member and then you tighten screw from the back right here so they technically just did it wrong right there um the outer the corbel was definitely put in after and you can see up there obviously i can pull back a dip right there because you don't really want to overhang on a fascia on a gable and more than 10 inches anyway so all right Everything else I'll have, I'll be, I just found some more things I gotta take care of, so. That's, oh, here, let's go to the fence area. Um, this is kind of funny. Um, you never wanna put Douglas fur in the, in the dirt. Obviously, it's not a good idea to put Douglas fur in ground. And that's what they did for all these columns. You know, at first you look at it, you're like, oh, is that redwood? And no, it's not. It's not redwood, it's Douglas fir. See? Yeah. So, I'm going to show you what happens when you put Douglas fir in ground. Okay, these are the four worst columns on the property. And it's a shared property over there, so we can't really get too much into it, but... Uh... 
obviously it's not good. Same with this one. Yeah, that's what happens when you put Douglas fir in dirt. All right, so that's it on this video.